my story with the JPC-12 antenna, which is also known as the PAC-12, begins with the MFJ-1899T, which is also known as the SPX-100, which I got to replace end-fed half-wave antennas to save throwing something in a tree when I'm camping. This is a rigid vertical monopole antenna. It's a coil wound around a fiberglass base with a telescopic whip up the top. And the coil is tapped to support various bands, but the antenna itself as a system is inflexible. It has to be mounted to the back of the radio with a counterpoise wire uh, fed somehow into the ground side of the coax. This was a good antenna until uh, my last trip when I went out to Lake Nooga, Nooga That's Queensland. This is where I found out uh, the main problem with this antenna for my setup that would cause me to replace it. And that is when you put the radio under an awning, the awning is actually in the way of, of the antenna. So it's got no flexibility with mounting uh, the antenna itself. So in this situation, I was listening to amateur radio here, which I normally would on an afternoon. Um, but the main purpose I had here, I didn't even bring a microphone. This was connected to a wire, which ended up being strung to a tree after the, this antenna. And I was using the loading coil, of course, to bring the, the wire down to medium wave. This is the trip where I realized I'm going to need something again that's fed with coax but still simpler to erect and get going than an in-fed half wave. Fucking hell mate, get now this antenna is called the JPC-12 everywhere that I can read it, but it is also apparently very well known as the PAC-12, and that might be short for Pacific Antenna, a company that um, could be a manufacturer of at least some versions of these. Finally, I'm looking at my own. We have some ribbon cable there that you break apart and use as radials, a nice uh, tapped coil and uh, base there that we have used as a feed point that stakes into the ground. We've got printed instructions for two types of antennas. There's a dipole version of this. I really love that this <laughs> has the FT818 on the front cover. Uh, if you turn it around, that becomes instructions for the JPC7, which is essentially two of these stuck together with a tripod and a ballon and used as a dipole. I think that'd be pretty good, but it also adds complexity in setting it up. A digital PDF version of the manual is easily accessible online, so for me the printed one goes in the bin. Taking a close look at some of the individual components, which I didn't get a close look at in some other YouTube videos about this antenna, um, not to say that they're all the same, but this is really high quality knurled aluminium. Uh, then we've got real carbon fibre sleeving there. And there is some press fit nylon uh, in between, uh, remembering that this all has to be insulated, the core and the sheath of the coax and the SO239 connector at the bottom there always do have to be electrically isolated. So there's no way to make just one chunk of nice aluminium. It might be nice to pot the inside because if you turn the top against the base of this component too much, you can actually undo it the nylon sleeving will come apart. I do also know that in prior versions of this, the carbon fiber can just be plain old ordinary PVC tube. So there has been some revisions to not only this component, but the coil as well that we're gonna look at next. Again, this coil just gives the feel and appearance of high quality manufacture. This is a, a nylon form. I'm not sure what this wire is made out of, but I guess it's coated in something that won't oxidize. The hardware here, I'll call it a slider, has a real nice snappy feel as it clicks across the individual coil turns. These markings here uh, to preset or to know where to preset uh, a couple of bands, and I'm not sure what they are, but if they're the upper and lower limit, it will be 40 meters and 6 meters. Brass inserts, and this is M10 thread all throughout the antenna. It's common to every section 
and the mounting to the base. Here's the counterpoise wire which is provided. A 10 conductor ribbon cable with a M10 eyelet. One little adjustment that I will make is to cut that sleeve back a little bit because it looks like it'll interfere with a threaded connection to it. I've got 11 meters of coax left over that I used for my N-fed half wave, so that's something I don't have to buy. Just out of interest, and to show that these are age-old antenna designs, is an image of a very similar loading coil with very similar hardware from the 1964 ARRL antenna handbook. My own little twist on this is elevating it from the ground without a tripod by mounting it on my vehicle when camping. Uh, well, here I am. I've got Crow's Nest National Park to myself, and I hope it stays that way. Can you see that? Um, up there. It's taken a bit of fiddling to get it where I want it, but there's a 1.2 to 1 match right down the bottom of the 7 megahertz, 40 meter band. Um, the radials follow the guy wires, uh, the tent ropes down here on the awning, uh, two of them. Another one straight down here. I don't like that they're only 5 metres for the 40 metre band. Um, your radial should be a quarter wavelength, which would be 10. Uh, but I've followed that one down there. Yeah, I think that the antenna might be a bit 20 metre centric, but we'll see. Um, followed one down the windscreen here. I've, I've tucked it under some cracks in the vehicle. But yeah, best I can for an antenna that's elevated like that. Now if you look here on the uh, Nano VNA, you'll find a very sharp curve. Um, I've got a little bit of a, you call that a choke, I suppose. Um, it's just the excess coax. Without adjusting the telescopic whip, if I go another coil, it goes into the, uh, it, it sits at about um, 7.165 into where we're ham at radio as a secondary service. So to keep it down lower in the band uh, and to keep the whip fully extended, this is where I'm sitting for now. In order to avoid humans, it's not unusual for me to stake out the campsite booking um, site and wait until no one's booked and then book a night for myself hopefully to find that there's no one here. As far as this antenna goes, I'd really like to know what happens uh, if I get some 10 meter radials, because that's just the way quarter wave antennas work. Uh, so this is on 40 meters, this will be a uh, shortened quarter wave antenna and uh, shortened with the loading coil. The car is a bit of a ground plane on its own, so I've probably got an advantage there This is a 4BH, the station I listen to at home, but I do get good signals on other. It's decent. Uh, also, FM. Um, that's a decent distance. We don't get a signal meter on the FT818 for FM broadcast, but it works. Um, it's telling me that. One antenna can do quite a bit. Uh, I might need to make another loading coil for medium wave that would just sit down here with me you know, with taps on it. Um, but this all this medium wave dial will light up tonight. There'll be a lot to listen to, I can tell. Morning has broken, 
And I didn't want to leave without finding out what would happen to the SWR plot on the Nano VNA if I removed the radials completely and just left the antenna attached to the vehicle. The results are encouraging. It's a better impedance match and the dip is closer to where I want it in the band at 7.100 MHz. I guess that's enough experimentation for one video. I hope that next time I go out the band isn't as quiet and hopefully the way I've set up the antenna is very repeatable if I remember exactly what I did.